Hey everybody, happy Saturday. It is midday Saturday. I'm here with Estimator Andy. Uh, hey. We are in northern Minnesota, three hours from home. We just started our trip home. Uh, we just concluded a very, very special event called the Ask a Painter Live Summer Retreat. And uh, we'll get more, we'll go into the entire thing. Uh, but yeah, we invited people from all over the country uh, to spend a couple days of ideating and conversating and expanding our minds uh, in the north woods of Minnesota. Um, first, before we get into a whole bunch of that stuff, uh, I should mention the PCA, the Painting Contractors Association. Uh, most of the people that I know here that came to the wilderness of northern Minnesota to hang out, I met through the PCA. Uh, and it's a wonderful group of like-minded people that all say, share similar core values. We're all interested in growing better businesses, being better craftspeople, returning value for those around us. And uh, there's a link in the show notes if you guys are interested in anything there. A whole bunch of free resources, a whole bunch of paid resources, content curation, everything else there too. So, all right. So let's talk about Ask a Painter Live Summer Retreat. So what was this thing? Oh, Andy Hall. You get the big one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just going to throw me right in there. Um, we showed up on, was it Thursday morning after uh, meeting a few people down in New Prague and then made our way up to our beautiful lakeside cabin up in Issaquah, well, Minnesota, which is my old stomping grounds a little bit, yeah, and yeah. Uh, started out the first day, get moved in, get to know everybody, and for myself, but I, I didn't know everyone that was there yet or hadn't met them. Yep. So just doing a lot of introductions, and then uh, kind of you know, what do we do right away? That's uh, <laughs> social. Got it back. social. Yeah, a little bit of a social hour, and so, yeah, got out was, on a boat cruise. Yeah, so it was really interesting. People started arriving Wednesday into town, and uh, Zach Kenny, Noah Cantor. Matt, Maggie, Kuiper. Anybody else come in early? Uh, no, I think uh, the next one to show up was, uh, no, I'm not sure. No, Chris Elliott, I think, was picked up, yeah. Yep, and so, yeah, they came into Minnesota. Oh, not. And uh, they, uh, we did a shop tour of our shop. Uh, we went to my farm. We, we toured the war room. We poked around a little bit. Uh, we had uh, we had dinner together, and then we went to our local brewery and had a couple of homemade beers. Uh, everybody kind of broke for the night. Uh, next Thursday morning, uh, you and I got together. You went and picked people up from various places they were yeah. staying. Uh, we them. loaded up the van with all the provisions. We brought all the food, beer, water, everything else. And uh, yeah, we loaded up and we kind of, well, I actually on the way up to this lot here, we actually stopped by oh, Jason Pierce's yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, we were so. at the new shop. And off the <laughs> that was office. awesome. Yeah, that's... Yeah, as always, it's like, it's amazing how many like cool, inspiring little things we can do all in a couple of days like that. And even just seeing Jason and his office staff and everybody else, it's, a, it's an amazing place and uh, yeah, very inspiring. So oh. yeah, then after Paris's office, we got a couple hour drive into the wilderness here. And you know, in, in Northern Minnesota, much like other Northern states, you know, we have cabin culture, right? So like families own cabins. Cabins are usually smaller, more quaint little log houses on, on lakes. And we call this the cabin, but it wasn't. A cabin. I mean, this was a 4,400 square foot complex lodge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was legitimately, it's only maybe four or five years old. We yeah. built amazingly outfitted. Like legitimately, we had one of the groups of the finest craftspeople in the country come here. And we all marveled at yeah. the fit and finish. I don't think anybody picked anything apart on that, that, dude, that place. Windows it's were premium, doors were premium, miles yeah. and miles of wood, expertly, expertly yeah, stained and varnished. Like they, they knew how to decorate. There's the right amount of deer heads and plants. And, yeah, and moose antlers, and yeah, it's just. It is, to, this, this is like a cross between like a castle and a lodge yeah. on a lake. And Easy. of course we're on this beautiful little lake called Roy Lake. Water's crystal clear, vegetation, fish, and beautiful lake homes, barely any boats. We saw half a dozen boats the yeah. entire time we were here. Holy man. And it was, it's a big, and we should say that there's a lodge right on the lake. It's a private home, but across the street, there are two other buildings. And one of them is a home in itself. It had three bedrooms or something. Yeah, there was three bedrooms, a workout room. Hot tub, room. sauna, workout <laughs> room, all this crazy stuff. And then there's another little house. That's two other cabins. Two other? Yeah, I think it was oh, one I didn't even two. see the other. Yeah, two little <laughs> rust. It must have been, it had to have been an old oh camp of some sort. Tennis court. It yeah, tennis like, courts and it everything. It looked like a rustic up north. Uh, yeah. You know, old style cabins, you 
know, so that's we right. had we had this crazy compound complex that can I mean it can sleep twenty people Indeed, easily. Yeah. Yep. Comfortable. And, yeah. So it, I mean, from the, obviously we saw pictures of this place. I scouted around for a half like half a year looking for something like this, and it was overwhelming. And, uh, it was amazing. <laughs> You know that person? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody's waving to us next to us. I guess we know somebody in northern Minnesota. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, it was it was an amazing time. Now, the only weird thing is we're staring down the barrel of the driest, hottest summer we've ever witnessed, right? Yeah, and, all of Like, that. legitimately, farmers are worried about crops. My pond dried up on my property. My it's creek strange. ran dry. Yeah. And we get here. Three days of monsoon. We are legitimately, it is dark. It is 67 degrees out. Thursday when we showed up is 59 degrees. Yeah, it's August warm. in Minnesota. It, it should be <laughs> oppressive. 91 degrees, 100% humidity, bugs everywhere. Those guys. <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it was, it's crazy. Of course, you do something like this and you would get three days of rain, but I had no doubt that it was gonna put a damper on anything because this group of people is a, Get it done, head down, mission first. We're all a bunch of crazy business owners and craft people and you know, uh, thought leaders in our industry. And it didn't slow us down at all. We must have logged eight hours on the ski boat yesterday. Oh, yeah, easy. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday. And then we had to, I mean, right when we got there, I think the we did, got the bags in, got rooms figured out, your bunk yep. buddies. And, yep, uh, yep. And then went down to the pontoon for a cruise, just a, a pleasure cruise. We were, we're looking hours. at the forecast, and legitimately, it, it, it said we were going to have about three hours of okay. break in the rain. People didn't even unpack their bags. We filled up two coolers. We walked down there. Uh, I secured us a Boomba wake surf boat, and we also got a luxury party barge, too. Uh, that was a, I mean, it must be a 22 footer. I don't know how to yeah, judge those correctly. Yeah, I think it's at least 22 dude, feet, yeah beautifully outfitted luxury pontoon and yeah we all just piled into the boats and started pleasure cruising there and enjoying the lake and it's just beautiful loons everywhere and, and all that good stuff so i think we got rained on that night did we, did we get rained out on the pontoon no. maybe a sprinkle had, it was actually had, great yeah, yeah perfect weather for that yeah. so we came back and uh we made some dinner and again one of the things i like about this group was everybody throws a hand in dishes making food everything else I finally curated a food selection, something yeah. that's easy, won't take a lot of time, but it's gourmet and all this other stuff. And so we grilled a bunch of marinated chicken. Uh, we had a whole bunch of, I don't even remember what we had with it, but. Uh, grilled pineapple. Oh yeah, grilled pineapple, grilled a bunch of pineapples and salad and everything else. And yeah, it was awesome. And uh, yeah. yeah, we brought a fully stocked bar, which we rifled through pretty quick. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it, it, first night, I mean, we, we schedule in a lot of social time because people are arriving from all over the country. There's about 12, 14 of us, give or take. And uh, yeah, it's just nice for people to get together. Um, we did have one sort of session, and I, it, I've been struggling with what to call them because they're not education sessions. They're not like lectures. We did the one by the fire the first night. Yep, yep. That was the and, intro. And so like, they're just like intentional group discussion sessions where the purpose of this entire thing was to bring in people that inspired me from all over the country, bring it together. So we have this super inspirational and this convening of people to hyper inspire each other. Legitimately, people I look up to that are all the thought leaders, I wanted together to not do the things that we normally do at industry events, which is, you know, hey, how do you estimate? Uh, how do you, do you, ask the, do you, do you close the deal? Do, yeah. What app do you use? Yeah, all that stuff. Take a down payment. I really, yeah, I really, we, we can just, that's, that's easy stuff to discuss with people. I wanted to take a next level thing and start talking about real things that could change our lives. And so I created about four and a half, five sessions that we were going to kind of play it by ear and do whatever the weather would allow and everything. But they all centered on um, limiting beliefs. We talked about superordinate goals. We talked about grit. Yeah, superordinate goals are basically, you know, grit is something that I've been really, really um, thinking about over the last six months. And grit is sort of like a squishy concept until you read the book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. And she's a social scientist. They actually apply uh, science uh, to grit. 
So this is something where, uh, for people who know me, uh, we love the data and the feelings, and you know we can have lots of feelings-based discussions, but I wanted to bring in a bunch of data. So we actually took a grit test. We looked at what the clinical psychology said about grit. We, we went over uh, you know, how much grit do you have, what, what is success be information plus grit. So we exchange a little bit of information, but then we also talk about grit is really what separates a lot of the people who are successful and not in life and this industry and everything else. So I was very interested in, in touching on things like that with this group of people because this group of people on average does not need more information. We have access to each other. We have access to the finest information in the industry. So if something's holding us back, it's probably not access to the information. It's gonna be your ability to find out your superordinate goal, right? And your superordinate goal is the goal above all else. But it's not a thing today. It's not a tactic that you need to do or a strategy. It's the thing, how long, grit is how long over the years can you persevere towards that superordinate goal, the goal that the goal to rule all the goals. goals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so that's the thing that's very interesting to me. And we did a bunch of exercises, the flywheel exercise, we did a limiting belief exercise to make sure that we're intentional about finding our superordinate goal, writing it down, and then not forgetting it so we don't lose sight. Because one of the things we talked about too was, you know, people like us, we all get distracted by shiny things or greener grass things. And that is legitimately, when you go to the science, when people don't succeed, the enemy of superordinate goals are those shiny things on the side. So we did a whole bunch of exercises to do that. We actually uh, introduced a lot of people to the VTO, the Vision Traction Organizer from Traction. Uh, half the group, not half the group, a third of the group probably had one or knows of it already. But again, more exercises to sort of ascertain what our superordinate goals are. So, yeah, and what was cool is I had like these four and a half, five, uh, you know, sessions that we needed to do. And as luck would have it, we just said, you know, there was one afternoon where a lot of rain was scheduled. We just sat down, we buckled in. We had a nice relaxing afternoon, group discussion in this beautiful luxury lodge. And they recorded that whole thing. It was, uh, it was a lot of... You recorded it? No, I said we should have. Oh, should have. Oh, yeah, I should have yeah, recorded the say. whole thing. That was a lot yeah. of good... Uh, Hindsight, right? <laughs> yeah. Just the amount of information and discussions that were spurred off of, uh, yeah. you know, like I said, talking about the goals, talking about the grid, uh, living beliefs was a really, I think a really... Touching on that was awesome for me, even as an estimator and, yep. you know, previous business owner. That was... Yeah, they... And then yeah, so we had a we had an awesome yeah we did some boat stuff in the morning right we all wake surf yeah. we did some <laughs> we did some awesome stuff there we had our session uh, day uh, the Friday right that was our yeah, big yep. day there and then um, yeah we buckled down for a steak dinner yep steak grilled some ribeyes uh, get a whole bunch of bears. asparagus potatoes all Didn't that go good hungry. stuff <laughs> did not go hungry man <laughs> laid out the charcuterie board for all afternoon and some good stuff and then. Uh, that evening, we must have done some boat stuff, right? We did some boat stuff, and we, yeah, we they hung around, we got a fire going, we did a lot of sitting around that, that kitchen table, it felt like it was a real yeah, good, yeah. we sat down, and all of a sudden you get a couple people that were discussing something, and all of a sudden you hear, all of a sudden people kind of swarm in on one yeah, spot to take a back conversation, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. I really enjoyed that, I mean, just the, that information and, and perspectives that you get passed around that table. It's, it's really interesting to hear how people talk about stuff yeah. and what they focus on. It's not always necessarily the information that's exchanged. It's like how people think about things and how they talk about it is really interesting to me. So, so we, these are things that I, you know, 10 years ago, wish I would have known that there's other people that were so into and so passionate about like this trade. And, yep. yeah, and, uh, and that big thinkers on it, not just somebody that just yeah, spray a house, paints and trim, you know, type thing. Yep. Just, beyond that yeah it's it's, it's like, a group of people who find they can't help but ask themselves questions yeah and, and, and a lot of them are why yeah. and there there is nobody there who, who only has a surface level appreciation of what we do i mean the painting is probably the least interesting part yeah about it to most people because that seems the like the thing that's mostly figured out most most, most solvable yeah the thing we can't figure out is like what is freedom yep what, what why are we doing this Related to humans and employees. And so, to... one thing that I like, and, and the goal of this thing, personally, my goal was to provide these people something they could never get anywhere else. And I don't assume that I'm the only person that could do that, but this isn't available. No, right? Is... And when we go to industry events, the PCA Expo, the Residential Forum, Commercial Forum, Craftsmanship Forum, things like that, 
there are things like this. Mm-hmm. And the natural um, inclination for a lot of these people is if you get these people around and you lubricate the conversation with a very large open bar and ribeye steaks and everything else, everybody's content and taken care of and happy. It doesn't take but about 20 minutes until somebody, like Noah Cantor, will say, okay, deep question for everybody, and you're like, yes, here it comes. Here comes something that will test every single one of us, and there'll probably be a lot of raised eyebrows, there'll be people pushing back, people sitting up in their chairs, and I love that tendency. That happens at a lot of industry events, but it's different here. The questions were pointedly different, deeper, 10 levels deeper. I feel like when you're living with someone for or a group of people for two to three days, yep. you start to open up and be a little more comfortable to push you back on things where sometimes you get yep. a lot of that fluff talk where it's, you're hearing people are sometimes bouncing stuff off you to yeah, to hear the same thing back again. It's like just to reassure them on You say things. businessy answers to yeah, businessy exactly. questions. Yep. Yeah, yeah some, some hype words in there. And One thing that I did not fully understand the power of was removing humans from their natural setting yeah. and force them to disconnect and basically engage yep. and this is a group that would naturally be okay at that you know like even if they're in their own home territory we can have some deep discussions yeah. but over and over people randomly would say this is different because we're forced to do that yeah. like Not- this is you're, you're put in a different setting a lodge it's an inspirational place man we had to get here and it was more a journey to get here for most people too i mean even for us to get up to three hours of driving and it's not easy for us to get here and yeah there's uh, people who are taking two three plane trips you know and then navigating <laughs> I mean, ubers and friends and, and then we got to get provisions and you know so i didn't understand the power of that but i do now yes no i think and, it's and noted yeah. so you know, that your your mind starts wandering to maybe the more you disconnect and the farther it is to get to something, maybe there's even more of that. I mean, you know? <laughs> I mean Siberia. <laughs> it's a snowshoe. We got sled dogs. No. But then, as as this group does, when they have a great tendency where you know you we do boat stuff, um, we light up a fire. You know, we got wildernessy people here that can make fires from nothing and. We get the fire going down by the lake. The lights of the lodge are lit up behind us. There is zero bugs right now in Minnesota, which is insane. (laughs) You should be miserable out here right now. It is beautiful. So we sit around the fire doing what people do around the fire. And I I am a firm believer since I was a kid. You're a wilderness guy. I'm a wilderness guy. There's something about a campfire that draws out so a certain type of conversation. There's something it's deeply release something innate. in there. It just yeah, it's that uh, it that, that, that tribe tribal you know. Yes, exactly. It, it triggers <laughs> something and inspires you to, to talk about your life in a different way. And man, we had some deep discussions. And then one of the coolest things we did was midnight boat cruise. <laughs> that was it was harrowing. <laughs> it was white knuckled. <laughs> and it was all of those things. I didn't I, go. I didn't go on the white. What, what, I didn't even hear about this. They slipped off into the night like a pirate ship. No, I called. Oh, it. you were not. Well, ah. I don't even remember who was on the boat. Jeez. I remember it was a boat full of people. But <laughs> no, it was dark. Yeah, I yeah. Was, must have just missed that. Dang, dude, right, well, it was it geez, was incredible. Yep. And listen, <laughs> there's there's a couple of us that have served in the military, and some military stories yeah. come out, and it's it's an inspiring sort of thing out there when you're standing out underneath the stars. It's a damp, cool night. You're on a completely still lake. Yeah. You turn yeah. the boat off, turn the lights off, and you're just stars, bloop, 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 just talking away, That's talking away, man. Oh, so okay. I'm now I'm frustrated that I did not go. I would, fell asleep too early. Yeah, so I, I almost got talked into a midnight boat cruise last night. And my better judgment was like, it's already 12:30, and you're like, man, <laughs> we got away with it last night. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we won't push it this night, but no, it was great. And then you know, of course, you wander back into the house after midnight boat cruise and. You have a couple more cocktails and the fire up the pool table and the foosball and uh, I don't I don't think people did anything crazy. That's what I love about this group yeah, of people. This can... isn't the oh my god, somebody did somebody embarrassing. Nope, this is a group of people where we all were responsible, we did what we need to do, we didn't break a lamp. No. And then the next morning I scheduled yoga for us. Again. <laughs> Two mornings. <laughs> Two mornings in a yoga. row, yeah. So we had a real life yoga instructor oh, from a local yoga studio come in and I had I had fully briefed her about who these people are and it's like you will not expect much from us this is a group of people who will take midnight boat cruises the night before and yeah. uh, we're going to be laden with alcohol I'm, for the I'm night really surprised that, it is, that we uh, the amount of people that jumped into that and were yep. you know ready to go one uh, person did make it the first day yeah. the next day two 
No, uh, yeah, we missed a few people. Well, some people left. Yeah, some people. So, some people had to catch planes, no, but I don't yeah. think some. We won't name any names, but uh, some people tardy. <laughs> some people were tardy. People were a little little late to show up uh, the second day, but no, it was great. It was great, and you know the the whole plan was to do this yoga down by the lake, and of course monsoon, it's pouring yeah. rain, so we cleared out the main great room of this lodge. We got a big stone fireplace. We got the lake out in front of us. Picture cleared windows. out the furniture, picture window. She stationed herself in front of there, and we all did yoga as a group. But I had the distinct pleasure of being right behind Chris Mole for session number one. And it was wonderful. If nothing else, it was worth it to get a yoga instructor to see Chris Mole do yoga. Yeah, it was, that was a thing of beauty, man. No, it, it was inspiring that I've practiced yoga quite a bit beforehand, not years ago. And it was nice to get back in there. I forgot that that mental part when you kind of let loose of that. And it's cool to incorporate that into something like this where you're, it's not just business 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 a little bit challenge yourself challenge your body a little bit but also yep. a lot of a lot of fun too yeah, and wake surfing you know just hiking around the property it's a hot we, tub we had almost none of us had really ever wake surfed before. no there are people who've done a little wakeboarding but we got this beautiful moomba it must no. be an eighty thousand dollar ski boat yeah. and you can fill up the ballast tanks and you can actually squat the boat so far lower the boat into the water so far with weight that it throws off a huge surf wave yeah. and you can actually get on a little surfboard and surf behind the boat and we were i've never done it before it was great no, you've never done it either never, yeah no. so it, it was, was it was phenomenal a lot yeah. of coaching with that that was one of the like uh, talk about team building things <laughs> everybody was ready to throw someone in if you wanted to go you were you're getting Absolutely. back out there and you were cheering each other yeah, on yeah that was yeah, it's, uh, it's a it's an insanely inspirational group of people where too, yeah. I did again I didn't know it's like of course you're at a thing you want to have a ski boat because it's like why not let's, <laughs> let's have fun but you don't understand that without knowing it we got a, a wake surf boat we got all that stuff and it challenged this group of people <laughs> who are very adept <laughs> at physical fitness we got a triathlete we got crossfitters yeah. we got all sorts of craziness going on and uh, that thing in itself again these are things that I'm not smart enough to be intentional about the plan, but it's like, of course that would be a beneficial thing to this group. It spurred on brain activity. Yeah. And it challenged and us in a way it. that it, it leveled the, the group because nobody had ever done this before. No. I don't you know? think there's anybody that was like, yeah. oh, we've got this. Ryan Turry, I'm still thinking that he might have uh, sandbagged us a little bit. He got up and was doing instantly good at it. And it's like, yeah. okay, come on. Ryan's a confident person <laughs> in a lot of things. It would surprise so. me that he's good at wake surfing yeah. too. So. So yeah, there was there was that. Uh, that was day one. Uh, that day was a little bit. Yeah. yeah, we did our big uh, we did our big session that afternoon. We talked about all the limiting beliefs. We talked about the fish flywheel fry. exercise. Oh, fish fry for yeah. lunch! My God, I forgot all about it. So I've been collecting fish. I've been stabbing fish all winter, <laughs> collecting them uh, for some yeah. purpose. And this was the purpose. And we gave everybody the quintessential Minnesota shore lunch. Delicious. Fresh caught fish fresh fried, laid out on the countertop, piping hot, Ooh. and we, uh, we, yeah, we got some vamachka, some Czechoslovakian soup, which is one of my favorite local delicacies, and, and of course, I was thinking, like, you know, it's going to be August, it's going to be 92 degrees, who the hell's going to eat a pile time. of hot soup and fried <laughs> yeah. fish? It could have been more soup weather oh, up here, so. It's <laughs> perfect, and we, we just came in, we almost missed lunch, the, one of the boat crews. Yep, yep. We got in to have, uh, have the, that soup just hit the spot, um, the shore lunch, that's, a lot, of, lot of things. You can plan these things out only so well. And there were about eight kismet things where it's just like, wow, did not expect. <laughs> I, I couldn't have planned that out. It was just perfect. But now we know it's a thing and you do it for another one. So yeah. I think the flexibility and, and having a group that <coughs> are willing to do, be flexible with what yep. we're doing too, that was, yeah, we, that was we had We had one of the most intense group discussions ever last night. Boy, we... Fired up. I, I got a case of cigars and we, we laid out the bar again and we all sat out on that deck and it didn't take long for some pretty serious conversations yes, to take yeah. place. It was boy, this is yeah. You're touching a lot of a lot of places in that. A lot of huge passion. stuff. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh that was an inspirational night of hearing that stuff. And uh, so let's see if we can name everybody who was there. Okay. okay. So we got we got the two famous Jasons from Minnesota. We got yeah. Jason the painter, Jason Miller, yep. which so he brought you. the most unique perspective. Yeah. That's all. Of I mean, all that the is. people. Jason Miller is an enigma. <laughs> he is he is, he is the coolest 
he has this, yeah, ins- inspirational dude. Jason Paris, of course, yeah. one of the most inspirational dudes in the industry, yeah. who almost worked himself out of a job this last <laughs> year. Like, I mean, yeah. he's a shareholder in his own company. That's an insane perspective to bring to this. Yeah. We had Matt and Maggie Kuiper, which uh, they're from Nashville. They run a monster commercial painting company, and they are two of the most inspirational humans. Confident. Yeah, they're working on a, um, I can't think, remember, Country Stars and Lambert. Yep. Famous Forever. country star. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. And then uh, Joe Finch, Detroit. Joe Finch from Detroit. Yeah. And, uh, inspirational work that that guy does. I, again, not operating with a lot of head trash in the industry. No. He's in Detroit doing fine paints of Europe stuff. Yeah. He's cultivated a, a, a cadre of realtors and this and that and things that we're not able to do. No, I mean, we don't either. have success with that. So. No, no. Uh, let's see, we had Chris Elliott. Chris Elliott, oh. we tried to talk uh, him into bringing his wife, too, because they're kind of, you know, key players in their own business. But Chris Elliott, again, residential commercial painting company, Army Ranger, yeah. no head trash. Yes. A people person, the life of the party. Happy. His people call him captain. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's just... <laughs> It's inspirational, I dude. Know that. The confidence in which he goes forward in his life is inspirational. Chris Mole, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Phil Always. Klein. Yep. Phil Force Klein. of Nature, Phil Klein. Yes. And one of doing good conversations with those two. That's his business. For people who don't know Phil Klein, one of the one of thoughtful. most intimidating dudes you'll ever meet. He's a giant of a human. Yeah. The most thoughtful. Gentlest, yeah. gentlest dude ever. Most thoughtful dude. Big hugs. Big handshakes. Compliments you all the time. He, in his business, he overlays trying to improve the human yeah, state yeah. of fathers and husbands yeah, and men. Not, and it's just, uh-huh. what he he doesn't need to do that. Painting no. businesses are hard enough, and he yeah. does that. So, yeah, um, it sounds like his, his wife also is a powerhouse as well behind it, too. Force like, of nature. Yeah, man. it's uh, force of nature. You, you struggle to, to figure out who's the more competent person because they <laughs> both, every time you meet him, it's like, oh, no, it's you. No, it's you. No, it's I, you. I've yeah. had a pleasure meeting his wife yet. So, but oh, I'm my sure God. if he's. She'll be around industry events for sure. Yeah. All right. So, ah, uh, Zach yeah. Kenny. Zach Kenny. Yes. Dude. You, you want you want to get group discussions and a, and a good fire up a party? You get Zach Kenny there, man. Oh. Like that is that is a dude who who does does thought provoking things and spurs on thought provoking conversation. Yeah, and, getting to hear some of his backstory on the way up. You know, he rode with us on the way up here and just yeah. uh, hearing. You don't always see you see people in the industry and you don't always know the backstory. And I I think I relate a lot of my be able to connect with someone is how they came into this industry or how yes. they or just what made them join or get in get into it and yep. and how they got into it if it was it inform it brings a lot of things into focus yeah. yeah yeah you got people that were painters and then moved into or you got people like i think the papers they don't i mean uh matt has a lot i think some commercial construction commercial experience, construction experience but, yeah. yeah people that haven't had you know, that really touch brush yeah. as much people who fired up youtube and learned how to paint yeah yeah, yeah. it's just <laughs> it's just uh yeah it's very inspiring and it's able to be able to connect on a different level and know that like where they came from and then that my story is a little <coughs> different than someone else's or there's little yep. or there's ones that are so vastly different that it's just like oh, amazing yep. but yeah yep. chris mole is one of you know painting painting castles that's just it's still one of my favorites he's like, been <laughs> on a fishing boat he's done castles he's done paving he's yeah. he moved to the north north woods of minnesota courted a young lady yep. started a family created a business and he is legitimately like Chris Mole and I. Less people would think that you know we have a very you know um, unintentional relationship. We joke around with each other a lot, making fun of each other, ribbing each other. Uh, but he is legitimately one of the most inspirational people yeah. I know. I mean, he is pretty he's smiley just, face all the time, <laughs> dude. You just want to be near that guy. You're like, you know what? If I stand within ten feet of Chris Mole all day today, magic will happen. Yep, <laughs> magic will happen. I mean, they. Uh, the wit that that dude has, and, and the humor and everything—it's just amazing. We didn't forget anybody, did we? I don't. Noah Cantor. Noah yeah, Cantor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Noah Cantor. Yep. Don't so advice Noah. from a young tradesman from Vermont. Noah and I again. I love Noah. Noah. Um, after our education session, fueled up, and then uh, Noah grabbed me. He's like, "I need to talk to you for real quick." And he's he's like, hey, listen, after the education session, you know, I made a packet for everybody for a bunch of worksheets and things that we did, super nerdy worksheets. And he's like, I disappeared for the last hour because I, I, my brain was firing like it's never fired before. I went into my room and I filled all this out and I, I'm taking notes. I'm doing this and I want to run a bunch of stuff by you right now. Oh, man. Like, I knew something was going shit. on the couch there. 
walk by and you can tell when there's something where it's like it's it's, it's a mind meld going. Oh, yeah. listen, it, and it's one of those things where I wish we could have said, "Hey, everybody, you should probably be over here to do this." <laughs> but again, there was ju- there was just as important conversations, going on factions going on. Yeah. There's a couple people smoking a cigar on the deck, the kitchen tables there. People are eating charcuterie board, and then Noah grabs me. We go into the dark lodge, and we, <laughs> we have a discussion. But yeah, there's um, trees looking at. Yeah, it's, Noah yeah. and I had this great decompression talk about my time in Burlington with him because. Yeah. It, it legitimately, I like calling people out on their head trash and BS, and everybody thinks they're in a unique market. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Nick, all that stuff you say, all these solutions you propose, you don't know my market. That <laughs> we're different, and universally, I find that that is absolutely not true. No. Everybody's market is the same. Humans are the same, except for Burlington, yeah, <laughs> Vermont. Burlington and- it's a little different. It's. A little, I still think you can apply a lot of the things, but um, yeah, I, I. It is a unique place up there, and we talked. He's been thinking about it. I yeah. mean, he's the one who says Burlington is different, and I was the one like, ah, BS until you got there, and it's like, oh, it's a little true. But and even he thinks about his market differently because of our discussion. What is it different? I mean, I, I haven't heard that portion of it, but uh, what's he find so different about this? I, sh- I should something? have I should have wrote a, a paragraph yeah. about my experience there to because I'm going to miss a lot of the I really know, interesting, know. funny things. But <laughs> all the cliches are true. Everybody walks around in wool socks and Birkenstocks. <laughs> Every single person drives a Subaru. Everybody has a kayak. Everybody has worked on a farm where they pull their own cheese. It's just <laughs> like, it's cheese. everybody has a garden. Um, everybody, like, I, I don't want to disrespect Vermonters, yeah. Vermonters yeah, by they saying them. they have lifestyle businesses. But really, these people have have the same amount of interest in what they don't do at work as what they do at work. And a lot of people create lifestyle businesses. The the prototypical, stereotypical thing is the ski buddy thing, where it's like, listen, we're in Vermont. We got Sugar Hill or whatever it's called. Mm, sugar I mean, Loaf. Sugar Loaf. Yeah. We got all this crazy skiing. And you know what? I'm going to work just enough to afford a ski lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> That's that, The thing is the painting, I think, like Jason Miller and, I, and my painting business when I was down working in Austin like I did a lot of that so that I could do things on my motorcycles and yeah, to travel yeah. and have these little bit of freedoms and to figure out and find some of these people like like Jason Miller how he's doing his business in, in Minneapolis and be yep. able to do do what he wants to do without hearing anyone else out about what you know trying to change his opinion on you need to grow you need to yep. have employees he's just happy doing it solo and what I like about how Jason approaches it because we know people in our industry who are who are headstrong yeah. and very opinionated but it's like, oh, that's an uninformed opinion. Yeah, he's not with Jason. <laughs> no, studying hardware. That uh, goes to the library for looking up you know, door hinges. And I, I asked him, I'm like, hey man, you can ride up there with us. He's like, no, I'm going to a historical society because I need to go deep into the archive oh, and, and find some stuff. And it's like, of course you are. Yeah. That's why we love you. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's the the personalities. I mean, there was about six other people that I invited and for various reasons couldn't come, but they were all prototypical examples of all this too. And, yeah, that's, that's like I said, going back to that Vermont thing, it's a lot of people, is it, is it a lot of solo painters or is it a lot of, yeah. yeah so there, lot of, there is zero subcontracting really? in Vermont. There's there's not a itinerant, Hispanic, or other ethnic, diversely, diversely ethnic workforce mm-hmm. in it Vermont. Does. So there's not there's not somebody who's got an $8 million painting company who does all, got 40 subcontractors. And it's just oh, not W2s. the culture up there. Yeah, it's, it's so, just some people with some other people who are all like-minded individuals and one of the things that Noah and I talked about was I think what's unique about that market is Noah is a is a mirror image of his clients they're all that we're not necessarily mirror image of our no, clients like we, we serve a we serve a contingent a, a, a subset a a group of people who don't live lives like us no. a lot of times that's a wide variety yeah. Side, yeah. Yeah. Versus having something a lot of like one mindedness which sounds like Noah's got. Yep. So that's a yeah, unique market. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh no, for sure, for sure. So yeah, then again, the discussions are exactly what I wanted. I wanted to test to see if you could create a scenario under the right conditions where you can hyper focus on these insanely high level discussions that would actually move the needle in a lot of these people's lives. And honestly, I think it was an overwhelming success. Yeah. I mean, uh, just to, to be, anybody just to be a fly on the wall in that, just like so the conversations, the the sessions we did that afternoon, even the session yep. uh, around the fireplace, or the fireplace around the fire the first night, getting to know everyone in there, you know, 
we didn't just do a here, hey, here's my here's my name, here's my business name. We give us your goals. Give one us year, your three year, ten year, yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and again, I, we, when we got to the end of, I was the last one that went. I struggled with that. Yeah, I, I thought about it for weeks. Yeah, what to say? That I, ten years is tough. It's still a, don't know. <laughs> that's okay. We need to find out so many people that are some have it, some are also in that wiggle room or that kind of squishy area for ten year goals. So you're not not out of the ordinary. Yep, exactly. <laughs> but. Yeah, that was a that was a very good night. And then this, like, so the second night, the second day of the sessions, it was yeah, like the technical, uh, not even technical, but the getting in and actually putting pen to paper for some of the stuff. It's not just theory and yep, the science, yeah, social That's, science. <laughs> again, what something where you know, I, I, what I kept reminding the group is that like, listen, I'm not here to BS. I will provide you guys value. We're not gonna just go to a business consultant who wrote a book and, yep. and the rah rah thing. We need a hard science. So I spent a year researching, reading books, condensing it down into a couple of sheets of paper, and they're things. It's a very selfish pursuit because they're things that I am interested in. But I also know that the things I'm interested in is an indication of where the business is, where the industry is, and a lot of other people are interested in the same thing. And I honestly don't know where else you go for this unless you do it all yourself. Yeah, you know. So yeah, that was that was interesting. So yeah, this morning we got up, did another session of yoga. God, that felt good, man. <laughs> it did. It was a little sore after the wake wake oh, surfing. Yep, yep. And I was I was loose after getting done. I was like, this is either gonna be hell I'm trying to do this with sore arms and yep. shoulders, but at the end it's like, oh, I forgot what how regenerative the uh, yoga can be too. And and then that mental state you get in that just that kind of a little bit of a it's funny. It, it, step. Yoga started out very quiet. It did. Yes. There was a lot of people who stayed up real late and, and had their brains worked out. Yeah, Six forty-five uh, came early. Yes, it did. And, Six, uh, yeah, for me. But by yes, the end it. of the yoga session, oh, is it laughing? One one guy had his shirt off. It's just it's a it's a. We had a great time. Yeah. Heard multiple times. I don't make that shape. That ain't going. Yeah. <laughs> Can't hold this. this is yeah. It. It's a lot of shaky legs. Uh, I, I even broke out in a little cold sweat there. <laughs> part of the way through, it's like, oof, it's been a rough couple days, man. Let's get it out of here. Body is cleaning itself yeah. here, so yeah. No, we, yeah. Avocado always, toast bar. Yeah, that was great. Dude. Afterwards, I went for a, went for a dip in the lake again to get that yoga sweat yeah, off. Yeah, 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 yep, yep. Some guys split off and did hot tubs. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah it was, the, yeah. the crazy. We had saunas, we had hot tubs. Um, Noah, Jason, and you took advantage of the lake, and yeah. some of the crazy people went out there for. Night, two early mile dark swims. pitch yeah. black swims I mean, with their, but with their buoys and wetsuits and I mean this is an interesting group of people yeah, it, it, yeah I didn't even think about that I mean, Jason this, Paris and Noah will swim for two hours they came right in when yoga started and did yoga yeah for another hour for another hour <laughs> yeah it's just and um, then yeah I, I, I laughed this morning because everybody's trying to figure figure out am I sore because of yoga or because of wake surfing yeah. yesterday <laughs> And I thought we'd get more time on the pond. I thought we'd be doing more pontooning, but I think that Dude, I think that, that, that building of us. skill, like that yep. having that task, I think that fits a lot of us. Where we're sitting on a pontoon, a lot of people probably don't are like, we gotta be doing something. We gotta, this can't be just sitting so around. So lesson learned for next time: we get three ropes and three surfboards, <laughs> and you pull three people at once. That's where the fun is. Stack and stack yep. people up. Stack and people. So yeah, and then we we had this great. We just broke immediately out into more open, free discussions this morning after we were jamming the avocado together again. toast bar, and yeah, that was oh, that's fun. Yeah, and that's that's again where it's like I I I giddy and shake with delight when Noah Cantor puts down his avocado toast and says, "I got a deep question for everybody <laughs> this morning." Yeah. <sighs> yes, and that's it. And it it wasn't it wasn't something pushy there. It didn't it never felt like we were we had one or two people that were really trying to dig anything out of someone who was very free flowing. All organic, which yep. is which is a great thing. So I mean the, the, the superordinate goal of this thing was that discussion and overwhelming success. I, I legitimately think that this environment and these people provided something unique that now I'm sure we can replicate. Yeah, it's gonna be so. tough though. It, it, Initial it, things like, are always tough. You always get that, that fl- you know, flash or the lightning the bottle thing. Exactly. You wanna, there's a lot of but there, I think you there's some I think things there's, I would do different. There's a lot of things I would absolutely not change again. Oh. You must have a, a ski boat now. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that, even if you haven't skied before, this is this is a thing you can do now. We can, even better. <laughs> yeah. I'd never done any of this before. I wakeboarded once in my life. <laughs> yep. Then we found a uh, yeah we found a place to have lunch. Yeah. All had uh, more more deep <laughs> discussions geez. about everything and. Yeah, Kind of split up and 
Some people are going to the airport. Some people are staying another night in the Twin Cities seeing friends. Uh, we obviously got to get back to our families. Yes. And, uh, but, yeah, man, that was that was a hell of a week. Yeah, and I couldn't uh, put it better. I mean, it just the inspiration, the, the, the meeting of minds, and just, like, picking – I am picking apart and stuff, but just – and getting to spend all that time with somebody. It wasn't like we were there for a little while and then back in our hotel, room, hotel rooms alone or something like that. Like we're yep. There we go. Uh, there we go. So you were saying? Yeah, so when you, you know, at the big industry events, like you said, you can do that, you know, the happy hours and that, you know, the dinners and stuff, and you get that little bit of time, to, not a little bit, but a few hours, and then you, you kind of go back to your room and you decompress. But this week, together so long I feel like you just really get to know someone and you're comfortable asking these kind of deeper questions without any any judgments well and, never... and what's interesting is that you know like at industry events you're standing in a nightclub eventually yeah. and you're screaming <laughs> exactly into the <laughs> because it's so loud we're by a damn lake and a fire. campfire with crickets in the background and it's Rocks. just like it's yeah, it, yeah and, and it's quiet it's cool it could not have been a more you could have orchestrated an environment for coziness, conversation, opening, sharing, everything else. It was just like, yeah, that was, it was a great place, man. The house added to it, the lake uh, added to it, the weather even added to it. It, I mean, it, it added its own special yeah, flavor on top. This is, a, this is a group of people that was not wilting flowers. Like, yeah. you could imagine a lesser group of people where, oh, it's oh, raining. Oh, I guess it? this is going to be what it is. Oh, <laughs> I guess we can't go in that boat. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Get wet. No, yeah, we're all going to go out there. It's going to be cold, it's going to be wet, and we're going to have a blast. Yeah. It's perfect. You didn't bring enough clothes to the dryer in the house. Cooking, cleaning, everything else. People Never threw a hand in that was... Three people asked, where's the manual for the house? we got to shut this place down. And people just started yeah. working on getting this house taken care of before we leave. So it also, is a group of doers, man. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, back to that like, thoughtful thing, like these... There's sometimes where I, I go with groups of friends and it's like, ah, oh, no, it's screwed. We paid for this place. We don't have to take care of, you know, do anything to help make it yeah. a little easier when we leave. There's responsibility. It, of course uh, you would do that. That's yeah. the decent human being thing to do. Yeah. Respect it. Respect the home. Respect exactly. the homeowners. It's, yeah. that falls that into, home I'm is sure, a business. A big business. Yeah, you know? we, you know, they seeing them treat that, I'm sure all those people, all these wonderful people we spend this time with treat their customers that way. I'm sure that's yep. kind of a, a peek into it. Like, oh, yep. care about this stuff. Thoughtful. That's not... Yep, they put forth effort in yep. everything they do. Cleaning a house that they yeah. don't own. Like you said this morning, there was nobody asking, hey, man, I need help with this. It was just Yeah, there was like, hey, in. man, can you just, like, come on, dude. No one like, sitting reading the newspaper. Yeah. Well, well, it's somebody else is working. Under there. <laughs> no, it, that was amazing. It was a good so. thing. So if you had to change one thing or add something to this, what mm -hmm. would you do, Andy Hall? Mm -hmm. Well, you're thinking, I should mention that Andy yeah. got a brand new nickname. Over oh, the God. weekend, the beloved Jason Miller started Jason. calling him Guestimator Andy. Yeah, yeah. That's great. It's gonna now it's gonna be across the it's world. It's the greatest no one, thing. Turn the turn the feet off. That's good. Guestimator Andy. That is uh, hilarious. Um, well, the one thing I changed, not by Jason Miller. That's good. I love it. I okay, love no, it. I, I, what would I change? I don't know. It's, that's a, that's really hard to be honest. I, I think. There is an overage on, you know, you can't say we didn't have enough food. We can't say we didn't have enough yeah. beverages. It I know that's comfort. a fault about myself. Or my, my biggest fear is, like, you just didn't bring enough of something. No. So, yeah, you, I And those are sometimes those, when you go to events, and sometimes you get this feeling like you're not you're not home. You don't have the amenities. You don't have that comfortable. Everything was comfortable there. It was, that's it was right, perfect. Man. And the people, you were comfortable with the people. I, yeah, the exactly. People I never met in my Living life. Living together. Yeah. These are I, I, 12 people at various states of life, business owners, leaders, thought leaders in our industry, titans of our industry, all just hanging out, sleeping together. Yeah, exactly. It's just, <laughs> everybody's bunked up, everybody's good, yeah, everybody's never respectful. Met no one. I'm sleeping next to them tonight, hopefully yeah. I'm not snoring or anything, but no. um, changing anything. I mean, it would have been nice if we had weather, but we can't change that. Yep. And I think it actually added to the, that was a benefit, so yeah. I wouldn't even change that. I, I don't know if I change anything. More, more humans, maybe. More humans. That's more I, humans. Honestly, I think that's that may. I, I didn't think about it, but legitimately, that would have been so. The the initial list for this was probably six more people, eight more people long, and for various reasons, people just can't yeah. make it to some things. Like, this, I, I invited both the Panzik brothers. Yeah, I would have liked that. Um, but Canada made it pretty illegal, or it was so 
they would have had to suffer through so much quarantining before and after that it would have it would have turned this into a four week, five week <laughs> sort of ordeal. So, but there was the Shane Garretts, the Nick Lagrassos, the I mean, uh, the Tanner Mullins, the mm-hmm. everybody that we had invited. That listen, they got families and stuff. They couldn't make it, and you know what? That's yeah. fine. Yeah, exactly. And in the future, like I said, then not even more people, just to have more people for people's sake, but more perspectives, more yep, more of. Uh, Connected with other, you know, like-minded, but also different people. Agreed. Yeah, and I think I think the challenge now is when you make a short list for an event like this, I think you've got to specifically pick some super diverse, yeah, thoughts, think, uh, thought backgrounds. Yeah, you know, I, I liked our idea of where a lot of we were talking about last night. I think this morning came up again of bringing some people out of our industry and maybe not, maybe not in this, but in, in something. You, to, you could make the argument that, you know, everybody should be tasked with bringing the most inspirational, competent business owner from something yeah, that's not a big business yeah. or recommend them to the group and do that because that, that would be a, th- a thing in itself. Mm-hmm. That uh-huh. would be interesting. Yeah, so I, I mean, to change anything, I, I think I've got to decompress a little bit of it, but I, I think I loved everything about it. I mean, there was no, yep. it wasn't like, you know, some of these events, even back to motorcycle my motorcycle background stuff you get some things and you want a little more of this you want the inspirational like not not yep. the technical like I don't how to change the oil not how to do this we were talking about why we do the things we do yep. and what what's the end goal what's not I want to you know be this yeah it, I don't think I'd change anything I maybe split maybe a little another session like we did uh, yesterday but a, a mini one maybe with it too yep. just yep. more of those just to kind of yep. I feel like that was a like the fuel on a fire for you know, some of the conversations later in the day. What's really interesting to me is that, I mean, obviously if I had a thousand more hours to put into content, <laughs> I would do that. But the problem is I've never been a hundred percent satisfied with any of this content I've created uh, because I always feel like there's some, because it's blue sky. Yeah. You could, you could include anything you want. There's a world full of data and research and science out there that could be applied to this. And I always feel like I'm, there's just I could have done more. So even all the masters classes, even this, I was self conscious about the the content, knowing that it's it's effective. But it's like if I could change something, if I just could wave the magic wand and have a thousand more hours of content development for something like this, yeah, that I, would be. I think it was nice to have that mix of the the pleasure and the you know the the fun time, the the social and unscheduled. Oh, kind of for part. sure. And then to have that mixed in with the other two, because I feel like if you went all the, if you got up in the morning did yoga and then you sat us in a classroom lectures for, all day yeah. yeah it would be i don't know if there would it'd be a lot more fatigue i think oh absolutely that and you know i mean how how torturous would that be if it actually was 88 and sunny yeah. and you're standing staring there and staring at the powerpoints yeah. on this nice beautiful to be up here but home. yeah <laughs> so that's the re- so that that this thing was kind of a i needed a proof of concept that this is okay also what i we've we've heard tell industry events where there's been nothing going on and people just came and partied for a yeah, couple of days can't do that that's not effective no. and people didn't look upon that as a great thing no, you know okay. and so what you what you don't want to do is you want to get that good mix of um, great conversations are going to happen anyway but you can you can shape those deep conversations with a little bit of content and guidance yeah. in part of the day to get people's minds thinking about break them out of the standard thing they're thinking about give them something else to fixate on and i think that does legitimately change the conversations it's not the discussion the crazy discussion out on the deck may have not have happened if we didn't talk about limiting beliefs no, and some and support and goals that day you know but limiting beliefs is something that's stuck with me. I woke up this morning thinking about it. I went to bed last yep. night, you know, thinking about it. And and the, the, the subordinate uh, goal is something that I've I have so much trouble trying to narrow down sometimes, and to to have a little bit more tactics on doing that is is awesome. And it's helpful. tough. You can apply that to everything. Oh, How about you and your personal, spouse? Yep. What's your subordinate goal? It's exactly. like Nicole's probably gonna hear an earful when I get home about this. <laughs> it's awesome. Being intentional is not a bad thing. No. So. And she, she's the most intentional people I know. But yeah, it's it's uh, the, the the foundation for the conversations later. I think was what I'm sure they would have got we've gotten to it. But I think it guided us to the thing. We did some coding stuff too. We did some. Oh, there was a lot of that. What do you use? What you know the normal things. Of but, but this isn't what. That's not what's making or breaking these these humans either. I don't nope. think it's they've got it all. No, nope, but still, people. Out. These aren't people who don't think painting's stupid. No, these no, are yeah. people who are like. Listen, of all the problems I have, that's the easiest solvable one. Yeah, Jason, and, Jason's yeah. comment the other day about, you know, I do this, you know, most humans hate painting, and I love this. I love it. And then just 
that puts it down to a dot, like why he does what he does. And, I've said those know. words a thousand times in yeah. my life. It's yeah. like it's a cheat code to love this. Yeah, it just it, it's, it's, a cheat, it's a cheat code. It's a competitive these, advantage. And, it, and it's strange because it's there's probably, there's probably a lot of business owners, successful business owners that really don't care for doing the technical part of it. It's oh. that's okay. That's that's what's nice. Like this weekend, I mean, that, that we had painters, we had business owners. It was yeah. It, that mixture is good, and to be able to have Jason be able to come out and say something, the, the talk, the, the conversations we had yesterday, well, there's no hard feelings going between anything. No, it was listen, challenging, this but a, also not like, hey, one of the <laughs> things. No one of the things that I was very upfront and honest about this is that this is not a you must have a big business or you're stupid no. group of people. This is I want to be challenged in all ways. All this is is going to be challenging to everybody involved. Yeah. We're going to make you think about something. We're going to make you be intentional. We're going to make you think about a superordinate goal, a goal to rule them all. Yeah. Yep. And then no BS. You can't hide from it. And once you've thought that. about that, once you know that that thing exists, it's hanging over you it. can't hide from it. Yep. It's the big guillotine yeah. over your head, man. Yeah. So for people who I should, I probably should have gave the, the, the briefing early on in this, but I've been getting a lot of messages and a lot of comments about why didn't I hear about this? Why, did, why wasn't I invited? Listen, folks. Before we unleash stuff like this onto the industry and the world, I just want to make sure it works. We have a theory that it works, and it was overwhelming success. So there will be more of these, and we just need to figure out what does it look like, where are we going to do them, what it is. And I, I wish for people to have this experience because it is something that you will not forget. Uh, it's a special group of people that just did a special thing. Man. Yeah, I, I'm left with friends and, yeah. and colleagues now that I didn't think I'd have. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's not That's something you just go and meet and hand a business card to. It's hey, I'm gonna thanks for the yeah, I got I got a, a new stocking cap from Phil Klein that is yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. As I, I had two million hats, so I don't know. I don't know how he knew that even. It, <laughs> yeah, the Nicole's watching my wife. She would know like you open my closet and I had way too many stocking caps, but got one oh. for every occasion. So to have someone thoughtful enough just be like oh here's something off my head <laughs> take it, it. <laughs> it just yeah it speaks a lot about those type of people that, that were there so all right people there will be more of this stuff um there was uh there's already a winter version of this in the in the works uh to give you guys the minnesota ice fishing mm -hmm. experience and everything else too so we'll see uh i got a lot to decompress and a lot to debrief about this one uh for the next one and yeah it'll just be really interesting so Yes, if you do want to come to these, don't be surprised if you see a bunch of these in the future. Uh, we just need to be super intentional about them. It's a big ask to get people to do this, but it's a big return as well. So, final thoughts, Andy Hall? Let's keep doing it. Keep doing yeah, it, yeah. Keep doing it, and I want more people to know about it. Like I said, get it, get we the want, proof want, idea. This is an insanely diverse group of people, but your brain only goes to, we can make it even so much more yeah. diverse yeah. and bring in all those different thoughts and everything. Yeah, so I think I, I don't know what else I would change. I don't think I, as of right now, I think I, I like the flow of everything. It was pretty good, man. There was structure, there was non structure, which I, I enjoy. Yep. <laughs> and and the yoga, I mean, that was, I got up this morning thinking, like, it would be really easy just to lay in bed. Be really but easy also, to lay what in am bed. I going to get out of that? It's nothing. So this I'm down is, there. This is an experience. Why yeah. not do the experience? Yeah, so it's just, it's cool to have someone that's not afraid to, to have an event like this that incorporates not the typical event things. So, that and you know I was inspired by an event that I went to long ago the surf prep influencer retreat where it was the craziest event I've ever been to where the setting the time the place the people was just finely curated awesome humans but then the structure was we're just going to do some deeply human discussions and then two thirds of the day we're on a beach on an island you know and you're like oh my god that could you don't have to just vomit Legend content people, yeah. all day yeah you don't have to lecture lecture the amount of data that you transfer between humans doesn't necessarily indicate the success of the event you know and uh there's something special that happens outside of that especially when you get a fire I mean, yeah. this at the surf prep one they had um they had the campfire but down right next to the beach oh. and it is insane yeah, lapping ocean waves Dude, coming in if, Lake, fire, ocean, fire, wind, breeze, crickets, frogs, and everything. It's just, yeah. So I was inspired, and I was I was witness to something where it's like, oh, that's a different way to do this. I bet you you could get something completely different out of this now. So, yeah. It's, you guys were the first. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I, 
I wish we crammed that. There's so much we did. I feel like we did. We got so much in a couple days. So much, right? And I'm like trying to think, like even leaving today, I'm like, I brought my fishing pole, but I didn't get a line. It's like, it's okay though. I still feel fine. I feel the. Just... I planned out three nature hikes as oh. contingencies in case people, if, in case I surveyed and people were getting a little antsy. Yeah. We were going to go to a blueberry bog and oh. walk around five and a half miles and this and that. And you know what? Found plenty to do. Didn't even need it, man. We oh. had a ski boat and a great conversation. So. Yeah. So no, it's the nail down. It like I said, thankful for all the people that came and shared oh, the stories God. with people like me who you know I'm not a business owner and then be able to like treat me as as one with you guys and just be able to watch and see the process of you guys building the BTO systems and that uh, the flywheel. Yep. That was a uh, you can see a lot of people's faces when they're doing that. Just really thinking hard about laying that out and those are the type of things that I challenge, I'm very challenged with when I was doing stuff. It just. Yep. That flywheel exercise, I, I used to get really discouraged when I would when I would go through some of these VTOs, um, flywheel, other things that that they were exercises in master's classes and things that force you to reckon with or, or come to terms with your purpose or what your business really is about. And I used to get discouraged because you would see this look of like discouragement on people's yeah. faces sometimes because they're like. It's not that they couldn't figure it out or write it down. It's like, oh no, this is it. There's no, I can think a lot of things. <laughs> Something is going on this piece of paper yeah. and I have to stare at it. It's like, it's this formalization of there's nowhere to hide anymore. Nope. Yeah, you no. Know? It's uh, or meeting the road a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, everybody. Well, thank you for watching this. Thank you for everybody that came to this. And again, look, look forward for more of this stuff in the future. I think this is this is something that uh, that the industry can learn from, and, and more of this should take place. It's a wonderful thing. So, um, all right, everybody, have a good rest of the weekend, and we'll talk to you later.